Hey there, cats and kittens. This week's movie review is Thor. A Marvel Entertainment Paramount Pictures film. It's directed by Kenneth Branagh and it stars Chris Hemsworth as Thor, Natalie Portman as Jane Foster, Anthony Hopkins as Odin, Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Stellan Starsgard as Eric Selvig, Kat Denning as Darcy Lewis, and Clark Gregg as Agent Coulson. This is the story of Thor, the Norse god of thunder and a valiant warrior who is next in the line to the throne of Asgard. His brother, his adopted half-brother, though he doesn't know it's adopted at the time, is Loki, a god of mischief and powerful in the ways of magic. Now, at the beginning of the film, we find that Thor is proud, in fact, arrogant, headstrong, but he is brave and dedicated and loyal to his friends, dashing, a powerful figure. Who is, gifted, who is gifted with a powerful mystic hammer, Mjolnir, which is made of the Asgardian metal Uru, which is pretty much indestructible, and allows him a wide variety of powers, such as flight, um, a powerful bludgeoning weapon, and every time he throws it, it'll strike an object with immense force destroying some objects, in fact, and will return to his hand. Now, coupled with that, of course, is the fact that, again, he has superhuman stamina, class 100 strength, being able to lift more than 100 tons, and also the hammer allows him to control the storm, thunder, lightning, rain, hurricanes, winds. So overall, a powerful figure, but even still, paling in power before his, his uh, father, the All-Father Odin, who is uh, the ruler, the king of the Norse gods, who are also known as his guardians. Now, through the manipulations of his brother Loki, he finds himself exiled from Asgard, and he winds up on Earth. Now, Odin also sends the hammer Mjolnir to Earth as well, and the hammer is now blessed, I would consider it blessed with an enchantment that says only he who is worthy may lift this hammer and in doing so, uh, possessing the power of Thor. So it's funny because again, Thor arrives to Earth just all full of himself, but he meets this incredible um, group of scientists. Uh, led by Jane Foster, who he's a bit smitten with, and who is in turn smitten with him. And he begins to learn the ways of humility and modesty. And he actually just starts becoming a very noble person, and actually starts becoming a hero. And it even more humbling so, when he is faced with a task, which he thought would be a, a cakewalk, but it turns out not to. And so, the fact that he's despondent about this, and I'm really reluctant to say, for fear of spoiling the movie, he finds comfort in Jane and a romance blossoms. So it's interesting because this allows him to really become a hero. Because you could be the most powerful person in the world, but unless you put this power in the service of others, then really what are you? You're a bully, you're a dictator, you're a bad person. But I think the most powerful people are the ones who are reluctant to use that power and only use power in the form of physical force, in the form of combat, when there is no other option. That truly marks a hero, because a hero will try to negotiate, talk about it, but violence will be the last resort, not the first resort. And so it's, again, as many of you have seen my videos, we talk about the hero's journey, and that's exactly what happens in the hero's journey. And so Chris Hemsworth really does a good job. He's not a one-note character, and he carries the film very well. I think he has a bright future ahead of him, and I'm looking forward to seeing him in the Avengers film. Anthony Hopkins, of course, 
He's fantastic. When is Anthony Hopkins not fantastic? I've yet to see such a film. And if you have, well, wow, that's a stunner. But no, Anthony Hopkins is great. He's regal. He's um, commanding. And he very much is a very believable king. And so he does the role of Odin Proud. The Warriors 3, they're all extremely entertaining. And um, the actress who plays Sif is um, powerful, but not overbearing. And yeah, she's a beautiful woman. And uh, yeah, she very much, I thought, okay, no, great casting. Same thing with um, the very grim um, Hogan and the dashing Fandral and the voluminous Volstag, uh, otherwise known as the Warriors Three, Thor's good friends. And each actor in turn does uh, a great job of playing either, in the case of um, Hogan, very serious, you know, and grim, and, you know, very dashing and Errol Flynn like in the case of Fandral, and over the top and bigger than life uh, in more ways than one uh, with the role of uh, Volstagg. Um, who again, it's just like a, he's, he provides a lot of good comedic moments too. And so, yeah, it just, they all do a great job. Sif and the Warriors 3 really add to it. Uh, Kat Dennings is very cute and <laughs> she has a lot of great lines calling Thor's hammer meow meow. And uh, yeah, so that's great. And uh, Stellan Skarsgård is great too. You know, he's kind of like a, a surrogate father to, uh, to Jane Foster. And uh, yeah, so he keeps an eye on It's kind of a little bit suspicious of Thor at the beginning, but you know, he comes around. And what can I say about Natalie Portman? She's super cute and charming and, um, you know, again, just draws you into the film. And I've always liked, I've always liked her. So yeah, she does, again, a great job with this film. The special effects were fantastic. And what I like very much about this film is they drew from the vast tapestry of Thor. Now keep in mind, Thor's been around since the 60s. He's one of Marvel's founding characters. Um, and all the way back to, you know, uh, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. And so, yeah, Thor, they take, they, what I like, really like about this film is they take from various um, decades, um, you know, including stuff from uh, Walter Simonson and so many other uh, great uh, comic book creators and various elements, including this box, which comes from the Simonson run, The Casket of Ancient Winters. They do a great uh, tease at the very, very end of the film, which makes me very excited. Won't spoil it for you. And, uh, yeah, I just think, again, the special effects were fantastic, and the film had to be epic where it needed to be epic. But I think what really grounds this film and what really made me enjoy it so much was the family element. Because you take a, you just to put aside for one moment all the mythology, and it's really a story of family. Um, how a, a wayward son, a prodigal son, has to earn back the graces of his father, uh, how sons have to reconcile with their father. And again, it's a story of brothers between Thor and Loki. And even though they become um, really kind of foes, this is reluctant. And it's clear that, you know, there's a family bond there and Thor uh, loves his, uh, his brother Loki. And Loki really is, in a sense, looking for approval, affirmation from his father and is tired of being in the shadow of, um, of Thor. So, you know, Loki's uh, tale is a little bit tragic, actually. And all the characters really convey this idea of family. And this family drama really adds to the film and really grounds the film and is kind of a glue to the film. And it's funny because when Thor arrives on Earth, um, the scientists, you know, um, Eric and Jane Foster and Darcy kind of become like a second family to him. And so he's able to become a better son um, to his father. And so, you know, Odin. And so it just works on that level. I think that's probably my favorite part. Is the music good? Yes, the music is good. So ultimately, can I recommend this film? Yes, absolutely. Go see it in the movie theater. Um, you'll enjoy it immensely. Um, you'll enjoy seeing it again on DVD, uh, on cable, Netflix. So yeah, it's just really a fun film an epic film, an inspiring film, and a film I'm really looking forward to seeing again. Alright guys, as always, thank you for your time and attention, and I look forward to talking to you very soon. Bye!